Hello everyone and welcome back to my second channel. Welcome to Jack in the Books. How are you? How are the kids? How's work? <laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm doing fantastic because today I'm filming something so freaking exciting. So recently I've been making some content where I react to mystery boxes of books. So I ordered some books that I'd never seen before and I opened them on camera and it was really good fun. And so I recently opened a PO box because a few publishers wanted to send me copies of books and a few viewers wanted to send me their favorite books, which is so generous and kind. And so I have a little collection to show you and I'm gonna open them on camera and it will just be a wonderful time. But first, I'm gonna shit myself, I'm so excited. I have been sent this. Now this is Sally Rooney's new book cover and I am going to be exclusively revealing it right now. Like there is an embargo on this and I have been trusted with the responsibility of revealing it. So the book is called Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I've been given instructions not to open it until the 13th of April at 2 p.m. So that's when you're gonna see this video. This arrived at the same time and so I assume that the cover is in here, but there are two parcels. So I don't actually know what's going to be in here. I mean, it could just be like something about taxes or like voting. So I think we're gonna open this one first. You guys know that I am a Sally Rooney stan. I love that woman so much. In normal people and conversations with friends, Sally Rooney captures the period in your life of being in between adolescence and being an adult so perfectly. And I think she's so ridiculously talented. So I'm honored to be sharing this right now. Oh my goodness, look at this. <gasps> I actually feel a bit nervous that I'm gonna mess this up. <gasps> Oh my goodness me. And inside is the cover. Look at this. It's a tiny copy of the book. Oh my goodness. So there we go. That is the cover. So that is the cover of Sally Rooney's new book. It's kind of got these people like poking through and I'm very intrigued to see what this book is going to be about. Um, unfortunately, this version that I've got doesn't have any words in it. Not that my eyesight would have been able to manage a book this small. Sally Rooney, I think you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. And I cannot wait for the release of Beautiful World, Where Are You? I have no doubt that you're going to do it again and grace us with something exquisite. So if that's that, then what is this in here? Big whoop. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, this is a card from my management to say congratulations on 400,000 subscribers. What the hell? Thank you so much, guys. Also at my PO box with these letters. Someone actually made a TikTok of them making this letter for me and the effort is just mind blowing. Thank you so much. It's even wax sealed at the back and you know how I feel about some wax sealing. And it also says, this is so adorable. They've written, thank you, Mr. Postman for mailing this. How sweet is that? I feel like people in this community are just the nicest. And also it's the stickers for me. How fun is that? I've got this postcard that says you can conquer anything with loads of conquers on it. You know me too well. There's letters all the way from America and Germany and best believe I am keeping these forever and I can't wait to read through all of these. So thank you so, so much. I love you all just more than I can ever explain. And now let's unbox some mystery books. Okay, so let's get started with these packages. Oh <laughs> my God, look at that. This is beautiful. Are you kidding me? Oh, lovely paper as well. Um, dear Jack, hello, this fine pile of books is all your fault. <laughs> Love that. Or to clarify, hello, we're a group of Jack Edwards slash Jack in the Books fans you inadvertently inspired into bookish business. Wait, what? We saw your mystery box video and thought there can't be a better life than being Denise and picking out mystery books for people. In the week and a half since we opened up shop, this has exploded. Oh my gosh, what? This is so cool. I think you and Denise have started a mystery books craze. So here's a free mystery parcel on us. There is no incest, we promise. Their Etsy shop is Ren Bird Books. So W-R-E-N Bird Books. That's so fun and I'm gonna link it down below. And look how exquisitely these are wrapped. I, you know when something is so beautiful, you don't want to open it, <laughs> but also, I so want to open it. <laughs> I can't believe this is stemmed from a silly little video that I made in my bedroom. <laughs> First book is Ronald Blythe's famous portrait of an English village. And there's a note alongside it and this says, Behold, the weirdest orange spine penguin classic we had in stock. It's a non-fiction book about a village in Suffolk. I'll be honest, this probably wouldn't have been shipped out if it wasn't for your PO box. Now it's your problem, enjoy. <laughs> I love that they were just like, we don't want it, you deal with it. <laughs> and that makes me more intrigued to read it and I definitely think 
that I will. So thank you so much. Okay, next book is called Moon Dust in Search of the Man Who Fell to Earth, and it's by Andrew Smith. This is a very cool cover. There are lots of novels about going to the moon, but this is the novel about how going to the moon affects people psychologically. It's weird thinking how only a handful of people know what it's like to look up from where they're standing and see the earth instead of the moon. You're right. So of course, this book is going to be so dated 50 years from now when we're all drinking moon daiquiris on Moon Vegas, but oh well. These notes are so fun. Okay, and then this is the last book, and this is... <gasps> is this Herman Hesse? It is! I saw on your Goodreads that you've read Damien and Siddhartha, so here's absolutely the weirdest of Herman Hesse's novels, The Glass Bead Game. It has his mid-war theory of how culture and academia would look in the 25th century. It's consequently weird as hell, and like no utopian book you've ever read. Is it good? Well, it's the reason he got a Nobel Prize in Literature, so I wouldn't crack out the popcorn, but I think you'll find it fascinating. As much a document on mid-World War II fears as it is a novel. Wow! Oh, what is that? She says, ooh, what's this on it? Wait, what? This is the gift that keeps on giving. It's a little bookmark, but it looks like a little sprout. So you put it in your book like this, and it just, it just pokes out. Wow, how sweet is that? Well, thank you so much, Renbird Books. That is phenomenal and so generous. So thank you so, so much. I cannot wait to dive into these and your descriptions make them even more appealing. So how cool. Okay, next up we have Lisa C, Snowflower, and The Secret Fan. And this is from Kathy Brooks. So thank you, Kathy. I'm really intrigued by this. Lily is the daughter of a humble farmer, and to her family, she's just another expensive mouth to feed. Then the local matchmaker delivers startling news. If Lily's feet are bound properly, they will be flawless. Oh, it's set in 19th century China, where a woman's eligibility is judged by the shape and size of her feet. This is so interesting because when I was doing my A-levels in history, we studied ancient China and um, foot binding. And then when I went to China, we heard people talking about their grandparents who had had it done to them. Um, and so this will be so, so fascinating to read. So thank you so much, Kathy. Okay, will he butcher it? Yes. Oh, wow. I think this has been sent to me by Faber Books. Look at that cover. That is absolutely stunning. It's called A Lonely Man and it's by Chris Power. Robert is a struggling writer living in Berlin with his wife and two young daughters. One night he meets Patrick, an enigmatic stranger with a sensational story to tell. A ghostwriter for a Russian oligarch recently found hanged who is now being followed, but is he really in danger? Patrick's life strikes Robert as a fabrication, but one that comes to obsess him. How? Interesting, and I would love to read more literature about Berlin, because my dissertation was about Christopher Isherwood, who also was a struggling writer in Berlin. So whoever designed that cover, my compliments to the chef. Okay, what is in here? <gasps> Ooh, that cover is stunning. This is called The Memory Police, and it's by Yoko Ogawa. This is giving me major dystopia vibes, and I'm thinking it might be. When a young novelist discovers that her editor is in danger of being taken away by the memory police, she desperately wants to save him. For some reason, he doesn't forget, and it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to hide his memories. Who knows what will vanish next? Wow! Well, my interest in this book will not vanish because, oh my lord, that sounds so fascinating. A dreamlike story of dystopia, and it was shortlisted for the 2020 International Booker Prize, so it's recent as well. There's no notes in here, but if you sent this to me, please message me on Instagram so I can say a personal thank you. All right, okay, so in here, oh, it's hardback. Brother of Sleep, a novel by Robert Schneider. Could the greatest musician of all time live his life in a peasant village and never be discovered by the world? Set against the mystical and bizarre backdrop of a remote alpine village in the early 19th century, this astounding novel tells the story of Elias Johannes Alder, a musical genius with supernatural hearing who develops his talent in secret midnight sessions at the church organ. In the face of devastating fires and other strange occurrences, the villagers seethe with a concealed hostility towards God, who sends nothing but trouble. While Elias wages his own battle with a god who not only denies him Elspeth, the woman he loves, but confers upon him a gift he can neither fulfill nor understand. Whoa! Well, thank you so much. This is so fun because I'm discovering so many books that I would never have heard of or picked up. So, um, yeah, amazing. Now, what are you? I'm not sure what this is in here. Oh, she's thin. She's got her summer body. This is The Wonderful World of Madge Gill. How interesting. Oh, there's a note. There's a note. Dear Jack, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to send you a copy of my little book, The Wonderful... <gasps> Did they write this? I wrote and illustrated and self-published this during lockdown last year. Aisha, thank you so much. Oh my goodness me, look. <gasps> She illustrated this? Damn, these are beautiful drawings. Are you kidding me? What, how are you guys so talented? What? And they've signed the front. Oh, wow. That's really, really special. Wow, I mean, you are clearly gonna go on to do incredible things. I mean, you already have, but the future, the possibilities that you have are incredible. So um, I'm gonna be keeping this forever and ever and 
Thank you so, so much for sending me that. Oh, so this is another one that's been sent to me by the author of the book. That cover is so striking, isn't it? The sight of the body did not sicken Ben. Not right away. Guilt was what got him. The mounting consequences rising in his throat and the truth which would inevitably come spilling out. What has Ben been up to? Well, if there's anything that's gonna get me hooked, it was that. Okay, Shaola, that says the story continues at the top, so I wonder whether this is part of a series. And I think that the author might be from Dubai, so thank you so, so much for sending me that. This is another one that's been sent to me by the publishers. So this is from Alison and Busby. So we have Skelton's Guide to Domestic Poisons, you know, could come in handy. January 1929, when Arthur Skelton won the legal case of the century, he went from being an unremarkable barrister to front page sensation. There's something I have to suppress in my brain every time I read the word barrister because I always want to say barista, but that means you work in Starbucks, not the law. Anyway, now he faces a new challenge. Mary Dalton is accused of poisoning her husband and the police are convinced she is guilty. Even her supporters think she did it. Oh, I always think that must be such a weird one. Like if you know someone who is on trial, but you kind of have this sneaky suspicion that you actually think that they did do it, where do you stand? That must be such a weird one. Oh, and this other book is Skelton's Guide to Suitcase Murders. So I guess this is a series all about kind of crime and the law. So um, Eve Cornwell is quaking. And thank you so much, Alison and Busby for sending me those. Oh, hello. This is The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. Lucy has her perfect summer planned out. Perfect boyfriend, perfect job, and quality time with her perfect parents. We should just leave it there. <laughs> and Lucy can have a nice happy life. Um, but let's see, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a twist. Then her mum's cancer comes back and suddenly life makes no sense. Oh, we all knew the twist was coming, but oh, Lucy. Before she knows it, Lucy finds herself agreeing to volunteer as a counselor at a camp for troubled kids, where lives are more different from her own than she could have imagined possible. Here, Lucy meets the dashing but mysterious fellow counselor Jones, who will change the way she sees the world and the lovely viewer who sent this to me said that this was one of her favourite ever books and she wanted me to read it, so I most certainly will. Sounds like that one could be a summer kind of read. Another book I was kindly sent by the publishers is Working Hard, Hardly Working by Grace Beverly. Grace Beverly is the blueprint for YouTubers or content creators creating businesses and thriving in the entrepreneurial world. I've never actually met Grace, but I've been admiring from afar. I think she's awesome. I think she is so inspiring. And this is a book to help you create your own productivity method, make your routine work for you, understand your value and engage in effective self-care. That's cool. I really love that this isn't just like perpetuating hustle culture. It's like, okay, secure the bag, but let's also maintain the brain. We all know the pressure of feeling like we should be grinding 24 seven. Yes, definitely. Um, while simultaneously being told that we should just relax and take care of ourselves. Like we somehow have to decide between success and sanity. In this book, entrepreneur and self-proclaimed lazy workaholic Grace Beverly challenges this unrealistic and unnecessary split and offers a fresh take on how to create your own balance, be more productive and feel fulfilled. How Cool, um, definitely gonna be giving that a read. Thank you so, so much, Grace, and your team for sending that to me. Oh, and this comes out in April 2021, so I'm sure this is gonna be on the top of all the charts, and I'm very happy to have a copy. Also, this is what's called an ARC, and I feel like ARC must stand for something, but I don't know <laughs> what it stands for, um, and I assume that this bit will be like in gold foil when it actually is published, so um, yeah, this is just like a proof copy. So these are all of the books that have been very, very kindly sent to my PO box. I am so grateful. I feel like the luckiest person in the whole world, and I hope that um, you might have found your next read from this pile. I most certainly have. I am so excited to get stuck into these um, and just indulge in some good literature. Ooh. Okay, very nearly knocked them all over, but <laughs> saved them at the last minute. Much like my degree, <laughs> very much saved at the last minute. And of course, thank you so, so much to Faber and Sally Rooney for trusting me with the announcement of your new book cover. That is crazy. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you do want to send anything to my PO box, the address will be linked down below. And um, yeah, obviously no pressure at all to send anything, but I would love to do a part two to this video. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.